One of the most controversial items in the budget is the introduction of a $7 co-payment to visit the doctor. The government says the fee will bankroll a multi-billion dollar medical research fund that will benefit all Australians. But critics see it as the end of bulk billing, a centrepiece of Medicare, which will hit low-income earners the hardest. Tracy Bowden has been looking at how the new co-payment will work. <laughs> It's a busy morning at this medical centre in Sydney's inner west and there's a pressing topic of conversation amongst the patients waiting to see a doctor. Bulk billing, it means that we can access quality health care, which is a fundamental right, basically. It's not a privilege, it's a right. So I think that right is being taken away and it's wrong. It definitely be difficult, you know, yeah, and shocking. Single mother Rebecca Wanganeen now gets doctor's visits free because this centre bulk bills. But from July next year, these patients will have to pay $7 each time. They'll also pay $7 for pathology and PBS medicines will cost $5 extra. I just think it's ridiculous because like what if you really need to go to the doctors and, this, and then you, you know you pay for that and then you got to pay for the medication and oh, it's just it's gonna yeah it's gonna be tough on some families each time i come maybe 10 times a year seven dollars a visit or more so and the same as i understand it's a pathology report for pathology as well so you know it will blow out of my proportion my medical my medical bills so yeah it will affect a lot of people while concessional patients and children under 16 will only make the co-payment for their first 10 services each year, public health analysts say that under the new scheme, low-income earners will be hit hardest. I think it's a very bad policy. It certainly will save money I mean, in the short term. It's, it's scheduled to save a billion or so uh, per annum, but it saves money off the backs of the poor. I think it's been a very bold move to go ahead with a co-payment, not just talk about it, but do it. And I, I've had a former health advisor to Tony Abbott, Terry Barnes designed an earlier co-payment model and supports the government's plan. What's important, though, is that any co-payment is fair, modest, and reasonable. Now, I think at seven dollars, the government's got that right. And the other important thing is that there is a threshold, a uh, safety net. Seven bucks to. Someone like you or me, who cares? Seven bucks to someone who is on a low income and already has a serious continuing health problem, it's a lot of money. One worry is that to avoid the fee, patients will head to the local hospital. So we're very concerned that we'll have a flow on effect, not only in seeing more patients turning up for GP type problems, but also not managing chronic problems, which is even more of a concern. With more people expected to use hospital emergency departments, the federal government will, for the first time, allow the states to charge patients for public hospital treatment, which doctors say would be an administrative nightmare. Basing it on triage categories is flawed. Um, trying to ask people to pay their whatever the co-payment is up front would also be flawed and, and very uh, difficult to manage. And doing it retrospectively once the actual diagnosis has been made and then somebody deciding whether this was a GP type problem, again, is, 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 is the bureaucracy um, involved in any sort of system like that would be impossible to implement and, and manage. As for how the government will spend the co-payment funds, in a surprise announcement it revealed that they'll go towards a $20 billion medical research fund. This is a political game to try and win some support from some sections of the health community. If we wanted to expand uh, medical research, why don't we do it through income tax, which is progressive rather than having aggressive tax on the sick who are users of health care? If there is going to be, as Tony Abbott says, um, pain with a purpose, I think the purpose would be clearer if that fund actually includes health care services and infrastructure that is relevant directly to the people who are making that out-of-pocket sacrifice. Medical research is good, but that's not necessarily something that is clearly tangible and understandable to your average uh, member of the public. 
Back at the medical practice, co-owner Dr Wadi Latif says patients may end up paying even more than the government's seven dollars. It is very likely that the GPs in, in not very long time, they will increase the gap or the, the co-payment amount to match their cost of running the practice. It is not unlikely that it could double more in a year or so. Thank you. So is this the beginning of the end of a universal health care system in Australia? The co-payment proposal I see as a serious mistake. And it is an impost on those people who have the greatest need and the least capacity to pay. I think that the basic fabric of Medicare hasn't changed, which is access to world-class medical and health services at a reasonable cost and affordable to all. Tracy Bowden reporting. And we invited the Prime Minister Tony Abbott onto the program tonight to explain the budget changes, but he was unavailable. The invitation remains open.